Hey, how are we doing? Uh, Corey here. This lesson is for Davis, uh, one of my users on my website, walkerguitar.com. And he wants to know a little bit about how to play better rhythm blues guitar uh, along the style of Fool for Your Stockings uh, by ZZ Top or The Thrill is Gone by BB King. Um, these kind of sort of minory blues um, rhythm background ideas that are uh, just real nice and kind of inspiring to solo over. So what I did was I put together a lesson that has um, addresses certain concepts um, that you can then reapply in your own playing with different chord progressions um, that you could use in even major blues and all sorts of things. So um, let's zoom up, check it out, and I hope you enjoy it. So I have my document here, A Minor Blues Rhythm Ideas. You can follow along by downloading it at my website, www.walkerguitar.com. It's totally free. Um, definitely makes life easier. So um, on the top here, the chords we're going to use are chords that um, you, uh, well, you should know and you've probably been playing for a while. So if we're in the key of A minor, our one chord would be an A minor bar chord perhaps, or what I'm going to do is make it a little, uh, little nicer, a little funkier, and play an A minor, play an A minor 7. So the way you're doing this, you're taking your third finger, and you're barring the second, third, fourth strings, muting the fifth, and in the case of the lesson, muting the top string, but you can actually play that at the fifth fret if you want, but for practical use, I'm getting rid of it. And the middle finger is grabbing the bass at the fifth fret as well. So we're gonna be using that chord, D minor seven, which is just like a D minor bar without the pinky. So that note now falls to the flat seven at the bar and E minor 7, and actually in the examples I'm not even using this, but this would function as your 5 chord, D minor being your 4 chord, and you could uh, quite easily run a 12 bar blues if you know your 12 bar blues using these chords. Pretty simple. So um, we're actually not going to talk about that, but we are going to talk about how to take these chords and make usable licks out of them. So um, the first concept that I thought was was quite valuable and definitely in the style um, of the thrill is gone, especially <clears throat> is the sliding of the chord. Now, if you slide the A minor chord, it's kind of a pain. I mean, it's very hard to slide a shape that large. So um, the concept is this, we're going to break this shape down into a smaller piece. So uh, <clears throat> the first step really is taking those notes at the third finger and just playing them with the first finger. Now by doing this, it's much, much easier to slide it up and back. So try this, try sliding it a whole step. I'm looking at uh, example number one now, where you're just going to slide from five to seven. back to five. So by slimming down the chord, it's a lot easier to move it. We're going to slide it up a whole step and slide it back. Now you only pick the first, the first chord. And that first slide is actually a grace note slide. It's very quick. So you need to be accurate. You need to be able to be fast and accurate with this. Now um, a suggestion is to keep your thumb positioned at <clears throat> somewhere to where uh, as you start your chord at five, it's directly behind the first finger. Now this is just what I find useful uh, because you, you have leverage, is that as you push up, the thumb hasn't moved. You've just swiveled your hand as if it's on a hinge. Your thumb is, is stuck against the neck though, and that's really the only part, <clears throat> the only part of your hand on the neck. So none of this is connected because that's going to slow you down if you're trying to slide this way. You can do it. I mean, you can do anything you want with enough practice and familiarity. But um, it's easiest to approach this way, where you're just squeezing the notes you need, and you slide up that way. And you got to learn to stop on a dime right at 7. And then you have to pull back quickly and resolve as well. Now, I only picked the very first time. I know my hand's a little off camera. I just want to make sure you get, you get the neck in the picture. But you're only picking that first time. 
so that means that in order to get volume the whole time, you've got to be really accurate and be, be squeezing down on your chord the whole time as well. If you go too slow with your slide, you either get that or you lose the, the notes by the time you reach the top at 7. Okay, so that's the idea. Slidable chord pieces. Now, um, these chord pieces can be broken down into smaller pieces as well. You don't have to slide three strings, you can slide two. You could slide the second and the third string. You could slide the third and the fourth. You could slide, you'd have to be creative, but the second and the fourth. With the third finger in the middle, perhaps. That's actually very popular when you guys, you blues guys, it's probably ringing a bell. kind of hear it in there. Okay, so that's the that's the uh, embellishment off A minor. Now off D minor 7, what we're going to do is get rid of the bar because we don't need it and just grab that one note in the center, 5th fret 3rd string with the 1st finger, and we have, really, it's an F triad that's disguised in a D minor chord. Um, but we're going to still call it a D minor just because uh, that's the chord it's being used on. So this whole shape would slide up and back a whole step as well. It's a little bit harder, it's a complicated shape. Okay, so the same concept applies to this one as well, where you could try the second and the third strings. Or, uh, it doesn't sound quite as bluesy, but the third and the fourth strings. Or even the second and the fourth. Or I like to use the first in the middle. Okay? So that's the, the gist of example one and how to use it. Now example two here is going to be uh, working a melody into it. So let's jump into that. So example two is here to basically give you a, a more musical means of applying the slide concept. So um, what we're going to do is kind of work a little melody into uh, the slide that we just did from example one. So um, this, the melody is this. You're going to do this where you take your middle finger, slide from 6 to 7 on your A string. So you should be getting that note. The 6 is a grace note. Very quick, the, uh, the idea of the note, so to speak. Okay? Then you're going to do 5 on the 4th, 5 on the 3rd. And then resolve it at 7 on the 4th. Okay, it's just a generic kind of simple blues lick. Okay, now that's going to precede the slide, so the whole thing is... And that slide is going to be uh, the double stop now, just two strings, not three, third and fourth strings. Now that's on your A minor 7, that's how it's working. By the way, every note except that beginning, the 6, that 7, the 5, the 5, the 7, all those notes fit into an A minor chord. They're all chord tones. It's not always the case, but it's a nice coincidence. It's a nice way for you to absorb a lick that's going to work over um, any A minor chord. And also keep in mind with the fundamentals of guitar playing is that if you really liked that lick, you could move this lick up the neck and play it, say, off of a D note. Play the same exact lick at the 10th fret, and that would be around your four chord, or even move it all the way. You could do it all the way across the whole song if you really wanted to with some, some position shifting. So that's just another thing to remember, is that it's usable. It's a universally uh, usable lick. So against a rhythm track, you might want to apply it this way. So here's our little, it's just on your A chord, you might want to try it, one, two, three. Probably not so busy, but you get the idea.
So example two, the second half, is the lick that goes around your D minor seventh. Okay, so this lick is the same kind of concept. Um, this time I chose to slide from five just for the heck of it. And it forms that little shape that's inside your D minor seven if you look at all the chord tones. You're doing five to seven on the D string, five, and then six on the B string. But you don't want to play them together. That sounds like a chord, you want to like a melody. Just That's just your lick too. And then you end on the D note of the D chord. 7th fret G string. Okay, and then you have a little baby piece you're going to slide. Going to slide the 2nd and 3rd strings, not, not all 3. Against your rhythm track. Okay, so that's a nice little usable lick that you can use over your D minor 7 chord, or any minor 7 chord. You can use that over your E minor 7 as well. You, you can use it over your E and your D. Any chord with that shape can uh, take that lick. Okay, so example 3 um, is now taking the... Uh, the concept of if you didn't have a jam track or you weren't playing with the band and you're trying to play rhythm you would have to keep the bass line you know if you're just a solo guitar player at home you'd have to keep your bass line going on its own so it's this concept of taking your thumb still in the key of A minor now and actually anchoring at the fifth fret to hold down the bass and then uh, using notes that are actually more generalized um, out of the, the scale of A minor, or A minor pentatonic, or A minor blues. Um, in this case, pretty much A minor pentatonic. And um, these licks will all fit perfectly over the chords in kind of a, you know, a solo form. So without, like, stuff already going on. So uh, the little riff I wrote sounds like this. And because you're anchored with your thumb, you're going to notice that, you know, you can't, you don't have this huge... Uh, reach anymore because you're not under the neck, but that's okay um, Because you can get all the notes you need in a very closed area with a, a nice closed grip So a supplement to this entire lesson package, but especially this this example example three is going to be a minor pentatonic the scale um, at the fifth position So that scale you should know that pretty well if you don't, I've provided a link inside the lesson to another lesson I've done with the scale, so you can check it out there and use it as a supplement. You can also use A minor blues. Both those scales are going to be great for you to start improvising around this, this vein. So um, what I'm going to do now, I'll just play the lick for you. It sounds like this. So that's the lick. Um, uh, the general idea is we're just playing around with the low section of A minor pentatonic and you're definitely, you have a Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, over the top of the neck style grip. Um, that's going to relieve a lot of tension on the thumb. The th you don't want to tweak your thumb the wrong way. Um, uh, you'll get used to it. Uh, and I think as you begin this you might really have to listen to your hands. I know it took me a couple of months to get used to playing with my thumb. Now I have absolutely no issues at all with it. At first it was like any finger where it got kind of sore and it felt sort of weird, you know. Um, but there's nothing wrong with doing it as long as you're very cautious and, and you listen to, you know, what your body's telling you. Okay, so um, the way the lick's going to start, you're going to grab all your fives with the thumb. Okay, so you got two of them. Bass notes. And then you have a little double stop at the beginning, which
which is seven. Uh, these are all double stops, they're all two strings at a time, so just kind of down pick everything. So you're gonna go. The seven I use third and pinky. I try not to lay the third finger flat, at least in this case. Maybe it's just what's comfortable to me, but this is what feels good. It feels like less work. So you got bass notes, seventh fret double stop, fifth fret double stop. These are on the center two strings. Okay. Then you got a little lick of seven pulling off to five back on to seven. And then you land at that same double stop in the third and fourth strings with a little pull to it. I got the weirdest tone today. This is just sounding... <laughs> I almost don't want to fix it. I feel I'm out on the range. Okay, and then you resolve that lick. Seven and seven. Fifth, uh, fifth and fourth strings. <laughs> Wait a minute, I don't know what. Oh, jeez. There we go. Alright, anyway. So that's the first lick. The first, I'm sorry, the first half of the lick. So, um, let's move a little bit here. Oh, so much better. Alright, second half of the lick. Okay, same thing, a little more skill because you have a slide involved now. So you're doing same bass notes, same first two double stops. Then you're going to take your third and your, uh, your pinky, put them back on seven, slide into eight, and hit that three times. So it's a, a grace note slide, it's a quick slide. Back to seven after you do it. Pulling off to five string double stops, a uh, double stop. So this whole two, uh, two bar riff off the A minor seven sounds like. So you can now take this riff and you can't move it to this to the bar chord because it's not symmetrical anymore and the thumb would have an entirely hard time, you know, really hard time trying to grab that that fifth string. So what you can do though is move it up to the 10th fret and do the same riff if you want to use it over your D minor 7. get the it's kind of tough to get the 12th fret depending on your guitar I have kind of a thick neck uh, Les Paul at least up here and my hands are kind of small so sometimes I'll change the riff but the general idea would be um, think pentatonic and always think of wherever your thumb is is that you're on the bass note of that scale so for down here thinking that the general pentatonic pattern and anything else you can go up a fret you can slide back really you want to treat the pentatonic as the point of resolution so in, as long as you're resolving into it anything you do outside of it uh, coming in is going to actually sound good to the ear because the ear is it's going to want to hear that uh, point of resolution. Anything else makes it sound, you know, a little a little more flavorful. So that's the, the, the same is true then as you move it up to the tenth fret. That's D minor pentatonic, E minor pentatonic. So you just transfer the same riffs, five to ten to twelve to ten, run through your twelve bar blues or however you're feeling it at the time. Okay, so that's the general um, 
idea behind these, the two main concepts are the sliding, um, but sliding is more the embellishment on taking the cord itself and breaking the cord apart into little usable licks, then working a melody into the lick itself. Um, I mean, sorry, into the chord itself. So you have a chord and then you have kind of the little chord embellishment slidey lick and then playing with your thumb uh, as a means to do, you know, other types of melodic ideas as well.